Welcome to another great long video. I know it's been a while, but I'm back with another one. And in this series, if you don't know already, we're using clips from my footage pack so that you can grade along with exactly what I'm doing with the same clips. So if you don't have the footage pack already, you can download it in the description down below. It's pretty cheap, it gives you 10 clips, and there will be more in the future, I promise. But I wanna get through these 10 clips first, and then I'll start adding more. And of course, those will be included free of charge in the price that you already paid. But if you don't wanna do that, you can also just grade along with your own clips. Now, in the series as well, I provide you the power grades of what we're gonna use. So you can build out the note tree yourself, but you can also just download that for free in the description below and import the power grade exactly as it is. I'll show you how to do that. And that makes it super easy to just input and get started right from where we go. So today we're working with this rice field clip. And what I wanna emphasize with this one is really get a nice grade, get the greens looking right. And then I wanna emphasize that this was shot in the morning and get some very nice glow coming in from the top where the sun was coming from and really give it a nice overall soft look of those warm highlights. So that's what we're aiming for today. Let's head into DaVinci Resolve and get started. All right, inside DaVinci Resolve, I have just put the clip in the timeline. This is the clip that we're working with. I'm gonna head straight into the color page. In here, to import the power grade, make sure that you download it from the folder below. And then in your gallery, you can import it just by right-clicking and saying import. You navigate to the folder where it's in. So that should be in here for me in the power grade. And then you just choose the most recent one. I haven't renamed it yet, but it's gonna be grade along seven. You just import the DPX file, and then you will have this power grade line here. You can just right click and say apply grade. And if we close down the gallery here, now we have the power grade lying right here that we can just start going with immediately. If you wanna build out the tree yourself, it's pretty straightforward with just serial notes and then a few parallel notes here. And what we have in the beginning is a lock to the means white gamut conversion. So we're going with DJI D gamut and Canon lock to get a softer conversion from this D log footage instead of D log one. And then into the Vinci white gamut and the Vinci intermediate. And here we're going from DaVinci Wide Gamut and Intermediate into Rexham 9 and Gamma 2.4. So that's the base setup of things. We're gonna start with the contrast as always and move backwards in the color correction and then we're gonna move forwards afterwards. So for the contrast, I'm gonna pull up my waveform. We can see it's quite overexposed from the beginning here. So I'm just gonna drag the shadows down quite a bit and highlights up a little bit just to get some nice contrast going here. Maybe the highlights up a little bit more and then the shadows tap more down. And then I'm heading into my exposure to lower the overall exposure. Something like this gives us a very nice view. And we do have some clipping up here. I do not know if we can get rid of it. We actually can get quite a lot of information. So let's just lower the gain to around 90 here and then start pulling up the exposure again until we get to a nice spot. I think around here looks pretty good. And then we can just increase the lift and again, a little bit to not get it too dark. I think this looks pretty good. This is pretty representable of what it was in real life as well. It was a little bit dark because the sun was just coming up and we can see it is a little bit higher the sun because we do have some slight clipping up here and I'm okay with that. In the balance, we head into the vector scope and we're just taking a look at where everything is lying. It is lying on those warmer colors already. And since we don't have any skin tones or anything, we can pretty much just leave this as B we can try and move the offset around a little bit to see if we can get something nicer. Maybe actually moving it just a little bit down and to the right. So we're moving this blob here by moving this knot in here. And you see, if I turn it off, all of the blob of color moved to the left. Now I'm just moving it a bit to the right and that a little bit down as well, giving us a little bit more of the green tones, a little bit less yellow to start with, and then giving us some more blue that makes it a little bit cooler, especially in the shadow areas and the water here. It just looks a little bit more natural than that yellow color we had before. So with the color correction out of the way, our contrast, exposure, and balance, we went from this to this, just a few clicks. And overall, I think this looks really good already. And now we're just gonna start working with some color, color grading the clip, and really getting that nice glow from up here. That's really what I'm looking for in this one. So. In the primaries, I'm just gonna go what I'm usually doing and adding some teal into the shadows or into the left here. 
and by adding two blue and one green, giving that teal color in this blue or in this water it really looks good. And we can emphasize it even more by removing one red. Now everything looks a little bit too blue. So what we're gonna do to counter that is we're gonna add some red in the gain here and a little bit of green, maybe a little bit more red than green. Just seeing that everything moves up and then removing a little bit of blue to get that warm color back. So we went from this to this where we still have some of the warm light going on. We can see it's a little bit hazy up here. And then we do have the more teal color down here, which is exactly what I was going for with this. Now it all still looks a little bit too blue. So we might just remove a little bit of blue here and a little bit of green here in the gamma. Something like this, just to get it in a good, nice spot here. We don't want to remove too much because we still want it to be a little bit blue. And I think this is better. So what we ended up doing is two blue, one green, and removing one red from the lift. Removing one blue-ish and removing one green-ish. This was really dialing in a little bit more. I think we removed a little bit less blue than green. And then we added four red and two green and removed two blue in the game. So that's how we got that temperature and that kind of balance in the color. And don't worry about it looking a little bit too blue because that's exactly what we're gonna fix in the highlight masking that we're gonna do in a moment. So to tweak the colors a little bit more in the curves, I'm gonna head in here. And we don't have that much to work with. We have some blues and some greens, so that's primarily what we are focusing on. We're not gonna highlight anything by dragging around or qualify. We're just gonna kind of make free dots here to balance things out. And I want the greens to be a little bit warmer, so we're gonna move those up a little bit here to kind of sell that glow and also to get rid of that nasty green color that we had. Getting everything looking a little bit more warm that fits the sunset and, or sunrise, sorry, the sun that's coming in. And then for the teal color here, I kind of just wanna move this down to split it even more to make sure that these colors look teal, but I don't want them to look magenta. So I'm gonna pull this up pulling away from the magenta, pushing it this way, and this is pushing it the other way. So it's kind of, you can see if I turn it off, you can see how this little peak will peak up here to give us more of a teal color here. And if you're not seeing the colors move in the histogram, simply just click the three dots here, histogram, and then output, then you will have that. So these were quite simple, but we're just making the greens a little bit more warm, and we are putting in the teals to be more teal, kind of balancing everything out and making a nice color contrast. And I'm not gonna do much more than that because I think that looks pretty good already and the saturation I like pretty much as well in terms of the colors. We will be adding a little bit of saturation now, so we might need to remove some saturation from the greens in a second. But first, we're gonna select the saturation node, head to color space, and then HSV or HSL, whatever you want. We're gonna use HSV in this case, remove channel one and remove channel three. And then I'm just gonna go into my gamma and just add a little bit of saturation here just to get everything popping just a little bit more. And I think that actually looks pretty good, but as expected, I am going to dial down the greens just a notch like so, just dialing this down a little bit to get rid of some of that extra saturation that we did out here in the more saturated end. So this moved it out here and then we removed a little bit in the curves. That looks pretty good. Overall with our color correction and our color grading so far, we went from this to this and our color grading alone went from this to this, which is almost unnoticeable, but you can see a shift in the colors, which is pretty much what we went for here. Since it's moving to around out here, we can see a little bit of haze. I'm gonna try and emulate that with our focus here. So what we really wanna see when we're moving forward is the focus should just be lying around the middle here. That would be fine. So let's just add a circular mask, dragging it out a little bit, doing something like this and maybe even a little bit more, something here. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of contrast to the middle portion of the clip, just to make it stand out a little bit more and make sure that our eyes are mostly focused around here. It might wander around the whole image, but I just want a little bit more contrast in the middle here. It's not that important, but it just overall gives a nice scene and a nice look. Now for the highlights, I'm gonna zoom out quite a bit and then I'm gonna add a circular mask up here and we can see the sun is coming from pretty much here. So I'm gonna add a big mask here, and then I'm gonna make the softening 
100. That'll give us that soft light here. And if we move it just out of frame, we can see that it's slowly just moving out here and getting weaker and weaker, but it is covering the whole area. Clean Shift H again, I can disable the view here. And then what I wanna do is I want to view my waveform first of all, because I wanna make sure that we're not getting too bright in those areas that are not. And to protect those, first of all, we can turn off the hue and the saturation and just get in the qualifier, the luminance here, clicking Shift H, seeing where those are lying. And then we're just gonna move down here. So we're not selecting those and getting all the shadows here. I don't mind that. And now we're not getting those areas that are the brightest, but we're getting everything else. So I'm gonna denoise it a little bit and I'm gonna give it a little bit of blur just to make sure that we are getting a nice selection and everything looks good. Then I'm gonna start raising my highlights just a little bit just to get that kind of nice soft glow and also just to give a little bit more contrast into the image and then comes the magic we want to add some nice warm glow so i'm actually gonna head into my vector scope so i can see what i'm doing with the colors here and we could either just take the knot here and then try and move it up but what i'm gonna do first is instead of using the gain i'm just gonna take the gamma because we have selected what we want to warm up already and i want to warm up kind of all the shadows and the highlights all together so i'm gonna move a lot of the red in here, so like free red. And I'm gonna move in some green to around one, a little bit more than one green, I think. And this just gives us this warm, nice light coming in from up here. It just gives us overall that warm look from that. You can see it just softly comes out and that's also why I didn't worry too much about the image being cool overall earlier because we're gonna add that nice warm touch. Now we could add a little bit more to the gain here just to emphasize it even more. We can see what it's doing here. It's really pulling up and giving us that nice halation glow kind of feel here without adding any glow, any halation. I don't think we need that in this because it is kind of hazy up here already. So I think that's pretty good. And then to counter that a little bit, I am going to select another circular mask and then I'm gonna make that quite big here. Click Shift H to see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna drag that out something like this. And what I wanna do is I want to invert it by clicking like this and then making sure that it's not selecting the brightest parts here, but it's selecting everything outside of it. So this will be lowering our shadows a little bit, something like this. And then I wanna create that color contrast by adding a little bit more teal into those areas, just to kind of emphasize that the sun is coming out even more and we think we can add some more softness this is without it, and this is with it on. And it kind of just gives us that nice glow of all because we inverted the mask and we get kind of the opposite of what we were selecting here. We could have also used an opposite mask or an outside node that could have worked as well. And that might've been better for what we're gonna do now because now we're gonna go a little bit backwards and then I'm just going to track my mask. So that's the last thing. So going into tracking, going into frame, and adding one here is kind of where I wanted to sit to begin with. So I'm gonna drag that quite a bit up. And then at the end here, I'm gonna drag it quite a bit down because we're moving closer to where the sun is coming in. So that will just give us this effect where the sun or the brightness, the halation, the glow, whatever you wanna call it, the warmth that we had created, just coming in a bit slower. And the same thing with the shadows here, I kind of want that to be more emphasized in the beginning here. So frame, keyframe, pulling that up a little bit. And then as we move out, I'm gonna reduce it a little bit more by moving this in so that we also get that effect here of that moving in. And that overall will just give us a look that looks like this, kind of getting the sun to come in and warm up everything a lot more when we get to the end of the clip. So that's what I wanted to do with this. And if we turn off all of our masking, this is what we came from. And this is what we ended up having. A lot more warmth going on up here and then the coolest shadows down here. And I really like how it turned out. It really gives us that sunrise kind of feeling without anything clipping too much and without anything being too harsh. I think we got a nice warm image and really getting that feel of sunrise. So that's what I got for you in this one. I hope it helps you out doing these videos or doing these grade alongs. And I hope you get the footage pack if you want to grade along so that you can do the exact same and try to replicate and get that practice in. So if you have any questions about anything, please leave a comment down below. I'm always happy to help and answer those. And with that said, I don't have anything more for you today. So I'll just catch you in the next video. And until then, take care.